this video right here, this woman, her name is Jamie. Her TikTok name is Lots of Jamie. She says, and she's having this really wonderful conversation talking about how everybody's narratives have been typically shaped by men. And when you really, really think about all of the things that we have learned thus far, all of our standards, all of our rules, all of our regulations have been shaped by men. Even our history and our perspectives have been shaped by men. She makes some amazing, um, some amazing points, but it really makes you think about all of the things that are shifting as women have been able to get on social media or get into regular media um, put out more books, be the editors, be the, um, you know, the talent, the creatives, be the creatives that are making our own arts. Think about the shift that has happened that has kind of um, aligned with the cultural shift that is going on. A lot of this is happening as more and more women are stepping into various roles and we're able to shape or speak our own narratives. I am so confused. The degree to which men do not even understand the world that they live in. The world that they live in right now and how it came to be and what is actually surrounding them. I just told a man in a comment section that women's narratives have never been the mainstream narratives. Because he was saying that women's preferences are what influence men and therefore women influence what men do. And I said, well, men wouldn't actually truly know what women's preferences are because women's voices have never been the mainstream voice. And he came back and said, I'm sad that you believe that. Please tell me when women were at the top of every, the editors of every newspaper. Please tell me when women were represented, everyone in Congress and everyone in the presidency. Please tell me when women were the author of, of most books. Please tell me when women were the deciders at publishing houses, who got published and who did it. Please tell me when, who decides at a university which research goes forward and which research doesn't. Please tell me when women decided how those research funds got, got distributed in the first place. Please tell me when women were the majority of directors of movies. Please tell me when women were the majority of writers of movies. Please tell me when women were the majority of cinematographers and choose all the camera angles of how, what even gets viewed on screen. You don't even know that all those things I just said for the, have been the majority men, sometimes exclusively men. You think, you think that the world, the narratives that get told, they have been controlled by men, for men mostly, to the exclusion of women. And you, the degree to which that is not understood, it confuses me. I just started reading exclusively books by women six years ago. I hadn't even really heard from the voices of women. I, oh my God, the books I was required to read in high school, if I would go back and like diversify them by gender, it was like 10 to one, men to women. Same thing with the curriculum, the history books, almost all written, told by men. You don't even know that you, you don't have equal perspectives. You don't know the preferences of women because those you would have to go looking for them like a needle in a haystack. You'd have to search. You'd have to literally and intentionally surround yourself specifically with the literature of women. And, and maybe, maybe that commenter does that. Maybe he just only reads books by women, only articles by women, only female journalists. But I doubt it. Like nothing... Nothing makes this, what I'm saying, more clear than the reality that women in the year 2024 of our Lord who become mothers will repeatedly say, I had no idea about X, Y, and Z in birth recovery. I had no idea what to expect with a baby. I had no idea how, how hard this would be or what it really entailed. And the reason they didn't is because even the narratives about that are, are have been squashed. We have historically squashed the very normal developmental stages of women's lives so that even women don't understand what's about to happen to their own lives and bodies. I think men realize the degree to which also the things they think women do want are just examples of times when men wrote women and they think they've actually heard from a woman. You just heard from a man. 
You just saw a man, a woman written by a man. You didn't see a real woman. You don't actually know what a real woman wants. You just think you do. Men don't even know they have not been co-creating life on planet Earth with, with women because they think that their narrative is the narrative. It's not. It's not. You haven't even heard the narrative of women unless you have very intentionally been like, I'm only gonna watch movies written by women. I'm only gonna watch movies directed by women. I'm only gonna read books written by women. I'm only gonna take in, I'm only gonna follow accounts on social media that are women and not just women in bikinis. You would literally have to search very carefully to get that. And I know, I, 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 don't, I actually don't know a single man that's done that. I don't know a single one, but maybe, I'm sure it exists. There are a few different points that I'm gonna make on this video. First, I wanna talk about fashion and how many of our silhouettes or standards were created from this man, from this artist. This artist, his name is Charles Dana Gibson. And these were the Gibson girls. You might not have known who these people were, but this is artwork based on this man, Charles Gibson. So he was an illustrator. His Gibson girl was the model of American womanhood in the 1890s and into the 20th century. So that's how we get this cinched waist, this crazy um, figure that many of us naturally couldn't um, hit. But also it's very, very white. You know, like even in real life, even at my thinnest, I could never hit this silhouette. But it's all based on the imagination and the taste of this white man. And this went to how art kind of created life. So this was his representation of the beautiful and independent American. Now it's the white is invisible, independent American white woman at the turn of the 20th century, because you know that that was what the standard of beauty was. It didn't include anyone that looked like me. And then we had the BMI, and we all know that the BMI had nothing to do with science. And I don't know, maybe you don't know, that the BMI had absolutely nothing to do with science. It was created by this man, Lambert, and it had nothing to do with science. It was about um, math. It was based on a mathematical equation, and it was based on the average man. And so this man basically created a system back in the 1830s that is still shaping our lives today, where doctors are still using BMI today, and it was shaped by a man. And that is how we ended up with the sizes that we were supposed to um, adhere to, which had absolutely nothing to do with like shapes of regular people or how you know, people's body mass might go from country to country, um, bone density. It, and like I said, it was based on white men. BMI was based on European white men and doesn't account for differences in body fat based on race, ethnicity, and sex. Because let's be real, like come into reality world, and I don't know why this hasn't changed, like literally men and women are different people. We have different levels of different hormones. Um, women's bodies change so much through puberty, through childbearing years, through menopause and all that stuff, but we're still using this BMI that was created in the 1830s, like I said, from this man that had nothing to do with women. So our lives are still being shaped by a man. Now I told y'all this video was gonna be all over the place, but even how we see history is shaped depending on if we are a man or a woman, if you have the means, like you have some money or you're poor, how we see history is completely different. So who is telling the story is gonna be completely different. So if you don't hear from um, women and girls, if you only hear from the people that are like, you know, just writing the story is going to be different than the people that are actually in the story. And even like I said, even if you are a man in the story, you might have a different take. So this um, article is called Women and Girls in Disasters. Pre-existing structural gender inequalities mean that disasters affect women and girls in different ways than they affect boys and men. The vulnerability of females increases when they are, when they are poor, basically. 
This vulnerability impacts preparedness, evacuation response, number of deaths and recovery. And the reasons for this vulnerability can often be traced to the roles that females hold in society and existing gender and cultural norms where they live. This can include the duties women and girls carry out, the clothing they wear, the way they're expected to behave. Now, let us think back to what happened during Hurricane Katrina with um, the claims, the, the alleged grapes that were happening. You know, think about what's going on in some of these war zones right now when women, are, women and girls are being great right now. How we see history through the lens of women when women are the narrators is gonna look completely different. It's gonna look completely different if you have money to get away. People look at the folks that stay behind and wonder why didn't they leave? Maybe they didn't have gas money to leave. So there are different reasons why the, the narrative matters. And I, like I said, I know that I'm going to be all over the place, but standards matter, narratives matter, who is telling the story matters. This is the reason why when I started reading books on my own, I would read women authors for history. And it kind of blew my mind because then you have to think about women are the ones that are typically the ones, like it says, that are um, that are responsible for the caretaking, that are responsible for the children and the old people. Women are the ones that are more vulnerable as far as our safety is concerned. So they're going to have a different viewpoint than the people that might be carrying around the pew pews or the ones that might be in charge of the evacuations or whatnot. So it is really, really important to think about who the storytellers are. So this is just another slide on this. Before a disaster, women and girls are usually the primary, I'm sorry, have the primary responsibility for caring for a home and the people in it, including children, older family members, and people with disabilities. Their caregiving responsibilities may prevent their ability to evacuate. About 80% of the people left in New Orleans after the mandatory evacuation was issued were women, despite representing only 54% of the population of the city. Okay, so I told you, I know that this video is going to be all over the place, but this is a Reddit thread that I saw earlier today from this man who is a self-proclaimed incel. He says, question, why are men's standards seen as sexist, but not the other way around? Um, I so I'm going to skip down to this part that I have highlighted. He says, for years, men were criticized for having unreasonable standards that every woman looks like Megan Fox, thin, beautiful hair and face, certain build. Also, some men beg for women to be super submissive and subservient, which I find to be problematic. And it is a problem. Porn and media has created unrealistic standards. So he knows that these standards were unrealistic. And truth be told, they have been unrealistic for a long time. And people like me, I don't fit into any of these standards. So it doesn't matter. There are some standards that we will never um, get because white men are the ones that created these standards for their own women. And then over here, he says, yet, I feel the same way about both body and income shaming. As of now, women have unrealistic standards for men in a difficult economy, that men have a full head of hair, are tall, and that they make at least two to three times the median in individual income at least. And he says down here that I underlined, um, he says, maybe it's because men dominated the media for the longest time, and now things have changed. It kind of feels like two wrongs making a right. Men still dominate. Yes, women are coming into the fold, but men's standards are the ones that still dominate. The whole protector and provider, the whole, you know, man, manly man, that is all through the lens of a man. Men don't listen to women and what women want. Men still haven't decided to listen to women. They're still being filtered through the standards that men have set for men as well. So one, at some point, these men are going to have to actually start listening to women and seeing what women actually want. But that would mean that they would have to actually value women's voices enough to listen. I know this has been all over the place, but still,
okay, I was saying like, comment, and share. But then I also remembered, I have a book. (laughs) If you want another perspective and you want to see more of my perspective, I actually put it in a book. So this is as good a time as any to promote myself. If you are looking for a book, if you want to hear a woman talk about boundaries, being healthy, mentally, physically, emotionally, and in a relationship, I'm promoting my own book. You can find it here at bourbonbougieshop.com. That is bourbonbougieshop.com. Are you? What do you want? What's your shadow? What's your light? What are your goals? I'm going to plug a fellow creator here. I'm a big believer in like, us supporting each other. And there's a lot of like self-help stuff out there. I can't vouch for it, but I can vouch for my friend, Bourbon Bougie, who has co-authored this amazing book. It's called Ashy Men Will Make You Fat, self-help guide that comes with a journal and a workbook that I have been actually going through myself. It's already helped me to manifest a better life. I'm a big believer in like, if you write it down, that's the first step in like literally manifesting things, not in a woo-woo way. It helps to write things down because then your brain starts orienting on those things like there's power in that and you can go to her tiktok page if you're interested and grab these resources even though this book has the word men in the title it's a really good guide on how to stop leaking your energy out right because as women we're the most likely to do this with men but i think women are likely to do this with each other with their parents with their siblings we're just predisposed to sort of give our energy away for free not only that we are discouraged when we sort of hold on to our energy this book will be a great start for just like really practical you know if you're not like a shadow work or light work type of person yet but if you just want like a really practical sort of restart probably similar books out there i can vouch for this i can vouch for the person who wrote it she's incredible like she's a really good friend she's a pillar in our our women's community she's incredibly supportive to like other creators that are just starting out she took me under her wing and has connected me with lots of other amazing women i'm married to a man that i love and I, this was very, very helpful because it's about so much more than just decentering men. It teaches you how to center yourself in a very, very practical way. There's also tons of like light and shadow work prompts on TikTok. You just got to search it up and just get yourself a journal and start journaling that stuff too. Get in touch with your inner child. Start thinking about what experiences shaped you and in what ways and that will help you too. to really know like why you tend to give your energy away to really like help to get to the bottom of these things and like what you can do differently instead or like what's your light side so you can share that with people because chances are if you are ignorant as to why you're giving your energy away, chances are you're living in your own shadow. That's what causes us to sort of externalize instead of internalize.